Welcome to the Western Association for College Admissions Counseling College Fair. We're so excited that you could join us today. We have an amazing lineup of presenters, but before we get to that, I do just wanna go ahead and start with a few housekeeping announcements. The first, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Second, you can use your Q&A button to type your questions to our amazing presenters at any point throughout our session today. Third, this is just one of many different sessions that we're offering, so feel free to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, you can access this recording by visiting the registration page as well as the website on your screen. With all of that said, I want to go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter, the University of Alaska Fairfax. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for showing up tonight and spending time with all of us schools. Um, I'm honored to go first. And uh, all right. So um, can everybody see my screen OK? All right, we'll get going. So uh, my name is Andrew. I'm a regional admissions counselor for University of Alaska Fairbanks. I'm based here in Southern California to be more accessible to students like you in California and Nevada. And uh, I actually graduated from UAF. Uh, I lived on campus uh, and off campus in Fairbanks for three years. I got my master's degree there. I only have positive things to say. This job is very easy because Fairbanks is an amazing place. Uh, and so, yeah, thanks for uh, listening to me talk about Alaska and UAF. So if you aren't too familiar with Alaska or Fairbanks specifically, uh, Fairbanks is located in the golden heart of Alaska uh, towards the center. We're 200 miles south of the Arctic Circle and we're just a couple short flights away from uh, Nevada and California. You'll likely fly into Seattle and then you'll fly from Seattle into Fairbanks. We have an international airport that's just a short uh, four or five minute drive from UAF's campus. And uh, if you want to see more of our campus and don't have a chance to come up to visit us in Alaska, definitely check out our virtual visits page. Uh, you can take a virtual tour with current students uh, and you can also attend a virtual information session similar to this one. But uh, yeah, it all starts with a single click. So I always like to tell students that you're going to get all the best parts of college in the farthest north U.S. city. So uh, yeah, Fairbanks is the farthest north U.S. city. You're going to experience a winter uh, with average temperatures of maybe negative 15, negative 20 degrees, dipping as low as negative 40. As you can see, our students here joined the 40 below club, getting their photo taken in front of our temperature sign uh, when the temperature when the temperature hit negative 40. They uh, stripped down to their swimsuits because they are braver than I am. When I took my photo, I kept all of my clothes on. Uh, but don't worry, during the summer, the temperatures get up into the 70s and 80s. You'll be able to see the Aurora Borealis right from campus. You'll even see uh, some moose and other wildlife right on campus. It's a once in a lifetime experience and it's all attainable to you as students in Nevada and California. So why UAF? Uh, if you are interested even slightly in the STEM field, in uh, business, in education, we are a cutting edge university for all of those things. We are a land, sea, and space grant university, which means we get funding into all of those different fields. We offer hands-on research opportunities and internships in the vast outdoor laboratory of Alaska. So if you're interested at all in hanging out in the outdoors, going on an adventure, trying something new, and especially pursuing a degree in the sciences, especially the natural sciences or environmental sciences, uh, we just might be the school for you. So UAF is Alaska's flagship university. That means we were the first university established in Alaska. We're about 100 years old and we're teetering on a small to medium sized university. We've got about 5,400 students on campus, a total of 8,300 undergraduate students enrolled. The reason that off-campus number uh, is a little bit higher compared to our on-campus number, we offer degrees online. We offer 14 bachelor's degrees entirely online. So if you wanna stay in Nevada and California, if you are afraid of the cold, let's say you wanna complete your degree in Homeland Security and Emergency Management, or even biology, you can do that from Nevada and from California and get a cutting edge education in both of those degrees and pay at the in-state tuition rate by completing your degree online. Or of course you can move to campus and sprinkle in some online classes uh, while you're on campus just to save a little bit of money. 
And uh, I didn't mention we have a 10 to 1 student to, to faculty ratio. Essentially, you're going to get face time with your professors. You're going to get to know your classmates. You're going to have intimate classrooms uh, where you are having conversations, you know each other's faces. And because Fairbanks is a relatively small city with just about 100,000 people, you're going to recognize people off campus too. You're going to get to know your community and really get involved. Uh, a lot of students come from California and Nevada as well. Uh, we offer WUI for all. So being from Nevada and California, you automatically qualify for WUI at UAF. We also offer in-state tuition for military and veterans and their families. And Fairbanks has a lot of great Thai food. We offer a number of degree pathways. We even have a community and technical college built into our university. So whether you wanna get a certificate or an associate's degree or uh, just a traditional four-year bachelor's degree, even if you wanna go on for grad school, we have all of those options for you here. Uh, like I said, we offer a lot of different STEM programs and education and business programs, but we also just have pretty much any major you would be looking for. Student life on campus is a hoot. So uh, you can see here, our friend is climbing an ice wall. Uh, we spray our outdoor rock climbing wall with water during the winter and turn it into an ice wall. Uh, also, we have a thriving art scene in Fairbanks and on campus. Uh, we also have 25 miles of hiking trails on campus, and we have a really active and supportive resident life staff who make sure that you have a lot going on, a lot of activities and social events to keep you engaged, especially during those darker winter months. Uh, but yeah, lots to look forward to on campus. You'll be connected and you'll really build out that community. As I mentioned before, you will qualify for WUI as a student from California or from Nevada. Uh, the number is looking around $24,000 a year. Uh, that includes tuition and fees, room and board, uh, which is about uh, like $13,000 cheaper, $14,000 cheaper than typical out-of-state tuition. Admission is stress-free. Just send us your in-progress transcripts. Uh, we're, our applications are open for fall 2022. We are test optional at the moment and just apply uh, during the fall or winter. So you have time to apply for scholarships by February 15th. And again, my name is Andrew. I'm a regional admissions counselor at UAF and uh, I'm a proud alum. I'd be happy to talk with you about my experience at UAF. And uh, yeah, welcome to Nanak Nation. Thank you. Up next, we have Shamanad, University of Honolulu. Thank you, Jasmine. Good afternoon or evening, everyone. Um, my name is Dior. I am one of the senior admission counselors here at Chaminade University of Honolulu, and I'm so excited to share with you all a little bit more about Chaminade. So our university is located in Hawaii, specifically on the island of Oahu. Chaminade is tucked away in the neighborhood of Kaimuki, and we're less than two miles away from the famous Waikiki Beach and about an hour away from the best surf spots in the state. Kamaki is a small residential neighborhood with a ton of history. We have some of the best local coffee shops, old school diners, farmers markets, and quirky antique shops. Our university faces Wailai Avenue and Wailai was just voted number one as the best food block in the state of Hawaii. So if you're a foodie, this is definitely the place for you. Some of my favorite places to visit are Kimchi 2, which have the best barbecue short ribs and Holly Vietnam, which is a really great place to eat on a cold winter Hawaii day. Or if you just need a great space to study off campus, we have Coffee Talk in the curb that's just right down the street. But now that you know a little bit more about where we're located, um, here's a little bit more about our university. So Chaminade University of Honolulu was founded in 1955. We're the only Catholic university in the Pacific and we're located on a 65 acre hillside called Kalai Pohaku. We're home to a little over a thousand undergraduate students coming from seven different countries and 47 different states and territories. We have a warm family oriented campus Ohana and as a small private liberal arts university, our students receive a personalized education prepared prepares them for an ever changing future. We offer 25 majors through our traditional day undergraduate program. And so as a Catholic, Marianist and Native Hawaiian serving institution, our goals inside the classroom are attuned to the real world, geared to promote justice and peace and the dignity and rights of everyone. With our average class size of 17, it's really easy for our students to get that organic mentoring that they may be looking for. 
With our 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio, our professors really get to know you for you. All of our professors are really well known within the field and still very active. So that makes networking and internship opportunities more accessible for current students and alumni. And some of our most popular majors that you can see right there are gonna be forensic sciences, environmental and interior design, nursing, business administration, biology, and criminology and criminal justice. Also, we're the only school in the state of Hawaii to offer forensic sciences, environmental and interior design, and data science. All of our majors are direct entry. So from the first semester here, you're placed in a specific course dedicated to that. And here at Shamanad, we are dedicated to giving back to the community and 100% of all of our students participate in service learning. While our professors are obviously educating you inside the classroom, we have a team of staff members that are really here to support you through your college experience. Through our Office of Student Activities and Leadership, we have over 30 clubs and organizations on campus. And these clubs range from cultural clubs to academic clubs to adventurous clubs. Our fitness club goes hiking, surfing, zip lining, and each semester our cultural clubs put on a showcase to celebrate the diversity that we have here on campus. We are NCAA Division II Pac West Conference for Athletics, and our campus ministry has a number of opportunities for you if you want to get involved in the community. Some of our students do take advantage of our study abroad and semester at sea programs, as well as our summer research opportunities. Also, fun fact, we were voted number one as the best student life in the state. So definitely there's something good that we're doing here and our students are obviously having the most fun. We don't have a live-in requirement here at Chaminade, so we really just want you to make the transition however you feel most comfortable. Through our amazing financial aid scholarships, we're really committed to making sure that college is affordable for all students. Our tuition ranges from 27 to 34,000, but about 97% of all of our students receive some form of financial aid. And the average amount of scholarships and grants a student is receiving is about 15,000. Our merit-based scholarships are automatically awarded upon acceptance. So there's no additional application that you need to complete. And if you identify as Native Hawaiian or Catholic or go to a Catholic school, um, we have signature scholarships that you can apply for. That is a separate application process, but that's gonna be anywhere from 50 to 100% off of tuition. We are rolling admissions and are starting to accept applications for those applying for fall 2022. We do have a holistic admission approach to our review process. So we're looking at you as a whole student. All you really need to do is apply to Shamana, whether that's through our institutional application or through the Common App, request for your high school transcripts and um, send in additional documents. As I wrap up my six minutes with you all, here are some ways to kind of stay connected with us. You can either visit us in person or virtually um, and get a tour of our campus with one of our current swords or schedule a talk story session with me and talk a little bit more about Chaminade and what we have to offer. Um, but that's about it. Thank you all again for your time. And I will go ahead and put my contact information in the chat in case you have any questions. Mahalo nui loa and have a great day. Thank you. Up next we have Boise State University. Thanks Jasmine. All right well hello everybody my name is Austin Moore. I am an admissions counselor with the Boise State University admissions office. Uh, I specifically work with students coming from Northern California. However, um, I'll be putting my contact info in the chat. So anybody attending tonight, please let me know if you have any questions. I'm also a proud Boise State alumni, graduated in 2017 from Boise State with my degree in criminal justice. And I'm originally from Roseville, California, so just north of Sacramento. Definitely understand that out-of-state perspective. Uh, I've been living in Boise, though, for about eight years now. Um, so just kind of starting out with where our students are coming from. Uh, we do have students coming from all 50 states uh, and about 65 countries worldwide. So you can see those darker shaded states where we get a little bit more of a higher concentration of students. However, we do have, uh, like I mentioned, at least one student coming from all uh, different state, all 50 states in the nation. Uh, and then we are currently the largest public institution in the state of Idaho with just over 24,000 total students at Boise State. Now, that second number on the screen you can see is kind of our full-time undergrad population. 
So that is going to be more of our main on-campus feel, um, just under 18,000 full-time students pursuing that four-year bachelor's degree. Uh, that keeps our average class size right now to about 31 students, about a 19 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Uh, one thing that really drove me to go to Boise State was um, the opportunity to graduate within the four-year time frame, um, no impacted or waitlisted majors, but also the opportunity to get to know my professors and not just feel like a, a number on this huge campus. We are located truly about a 10 to 15 minute walk from our campus uh, into the downtown capital city. Uh, being located in the capital city is a ton of fun, uh, a lot of recreational opportunities. Having downtown so close brings you all those big city amenities, the big box stores. Uh, so you have an awesome art scene, local food scene, music scene, um, but we also have a lot of outdoor opportunities as well. Um, the Boise River truly runs right through our campus. So you can float the river in the summer. Our local ski and snowboard mountain is about 17 miles away. Uh, and then we do get the extreme of all four seasons. So really nice and hot in the summertime, but uh, we get a little bit of snow in the winter. So if you enjoy outdoor recreation all throughout the year, um, a lot of opportunity there. Um, but kind of Switching gears a little bit to our academic offerings at Boise State, we offer over 180 different majors and minors for our students to choose from. Now, I like to also show our top 10 most popular majors chosen by incoming students, just because I know a list of almost 200 programs can be a little overwhelming sometimes to look through. So um, this list I, I really like because it shows all areas of our campus, anything from business to nursing, engineering. Uh, like I mentioned, I got my degree in criminal justice, which made the list, but um, I also like to draw some attention to our number two most popular major that we see on incoming applications of just general undeclared. That allows students to apply to Boise State, still qualify for scholarships and any financial aid and be fully admitted and even can do their entire freshman year as an undeclared student before um, really declaring what major that you might want to go into. So if you aren't sure what you want to apply with or what career outcome you're looking for, or maybe you know you want to go to grad school, just trying to figure out in what area, um, general undeclared can be a great way to kind of come in. But I do want to kind of spend uh, some time talking about our application process and some scholarship options. So um, to apply to Boise State is pretty straightforward. Uh, we are now test blind, meaning we do not consider any SAT or ACT scores. So these three steps on the screen are truly the three steps to take to apply um, as a non-resident student. First step is just applying through the Boise State general application, just right through our website. Uh, there is a $50 application fee, and then we will just need your official in-progress high school transcript. And we look at your cumulative unweighted high school GPA for both admissions consideration and scholarship consideration. Now we offer three different non-resident scholarships and, and much like the others in the room, we are part of the WUI program. Um, however, we do have two other Boise State specific awards. So this grid kind of shows the award, uh, how much it's worth, what GPA we look for or that we require in order to um, be granted that scholarship and then what that brings your cost of tuition down to. So for example, our average incoming GPA for a high school student is around a 3.5, 3.52. Um, so we have our Payette Award, which if students are kind of in that uh, 3.5 to 4.0 range, uh, then that'll be worth $8,000 a year. And all three of these awards are four-year renewable. Um, you can see our WUI is our most lucrative awards, also our highest uh, achieving award at a 3.9. And then we do have the Alpine that starts at a 3.2. So the biggest thing to kind of take away is that uh, in that orange box down at the bottom, December 15th is our scholarship deadline for fall 2022. We work on what's called rolling admission. So we are currently accepting application and transcripts and we are admitting students and already awarding scholarships for fall 22. So that is totally open. And I definitely recommend doing so before uh, December 15th, because if we get your application or transcripts after, unfortunately it won't be considered. So here's my contact info. Really appreciate you uh, taking the time to hear a little bit more about the colleges tonight. I'll also throw that into the chat. Thank you so much. Thank you. Up next, we have the University of Idaho. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Jermaine Rucker. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions with the University of Idaho. 
I'm actually located here in Sacramento, California, and um, I'm the regional recruiter for all of Northern California. And um, I am um, the University of Idaho um, is part of uh, is, is, is about seven hours north of Boise. For those of you who don't know, um, we are in a small town called Moscow, Idaho. So Moscow is actually we actually share a border with uh, Washington State University, literally nine miles apart from one another. Not only do we share a border, but we also share a couple of uh, major programs uh, between us where students will take classes back and forth on each other's campus. Pretty cool, huh? Um, another uh, fun fact about U of I is uh, that we were, we were founded as a public land grant university in 1889. We actually were founded before the state of Idaho received its state charter or became a state. So pretty cool. Um, we are in, in that quintessential college town of Moscow with only about 25,000 people. Um, our main campus in Moscow has about 9,000 total students and that includes our graduate students as well. Our university is made up of eight different colleges such as our College of Engineering, College of Business and so on. Uh, we have about 96 majors for undergraduate students to choose from, and those eight colleges house those 96 majors within it. Um, we are considered Idaho's, the state of Idaho's premier research university, and that's because we receive more money than any of the other schools in the state of Idaho when it comes to research. All of our programs really emphasize hands-on learning, um, so much so that 70% of our undergraduate population participate in some sort of uh, uh, research experience. Uh, matter of fact, our College of Engineering is just ranked seventh by the National Academy of Engineering for infusing uh, real world experiences into its curriculum. Um, we also have a, a, a unique opportunity for students. Uh, it's called the Semester in the Wild, where students will literally spend a semester in the wild in our Taylor Wilderness Research Station, uh, doing a bunch of research and just learning all sorts of things about the wilderness. We also offer pre-professional programs such as uh, pre-law and pre-health. You know, we have students that are right now learning about dairy production in our on-campus barns. Um, they are discovering more about wildfires in our experimental forest. Um, they perform on stage for a theater or dance production. And um, one very unique program, we have students trading stocks with real money, um, all within an average class size of 24 students. Uh, that, that stock trading program is pretty cool. They are trading, they are managing over a half a million dollars in the Barker Management Trading Program. Some of our more popular majors are gonna be biology, mechanical engineering, agriculture, uh, wildlife sciences, business, psychology, and architecture, just to name a few. Although our campus is, is small for a public university, our students are still very active and involved in our 200 plus clubs and organizations on campus. We are division one in sports, as you can see, we compete in the Big Sky Conference. And so we will compete against teams like UC Davis or Sac State. Um, and th that gives you guys a chance to support your, your, your fellow bandits um, when you want to go to games. Um, we have uh, 16 Division I sports. And, um, and if you're not an athlete, well, we have uh, intramural sports and club sports as well. We are a major outdoor activity school. Uh, our, our rec center hosts a bunch of events uh, for hiking and camping and uh, rafting, rock climbing, mountain biking, et cetera. And one thing that we keep improving on every year is um, the diversity on our campus. Right now, we do have students from all 50 states and 73 different countries. And we offer an awesome study abroad program where students can uh, visit, uh, or, uh, visit uh, about 370 different universities uh, from 70 different countries to choose from. Our admissions requirements. Right now, um, if you have a 2.6 unweighted GPA, we are test optional, so it's up to you whether or not you want to submit it. We will use that for class placement if you decide to enroll at the U of I. Now, if you are below that 2.6 unweighted GPA, we uh, ask that you submit a test score if you've taken it. 
And if you've met the core requirements uh, for California, which is usually your A through G report, uh, core requirements, then your core requirement, your A through G core requirements will meet our core requirements for admissions. We are also part of WUI. All you have to remember with this is if you're admitted to the university, you automatically receive the WUI. And that uh, is going to save you well over $15,000 off of the out of state tuition and fees. That, as you can see right here in the middle, our WUI tuition and fees are 11431 All right. And my time is almost up, but we are accepting applications. And um, all you have to do, you can go to our website to complete the application, or you can go to the Common App. All right, keep in mind it's much faster on our app on our website. Submit your transcripts to admissions at uidaho.edu and your uh, $60 uh, application fee. And that's it. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Goodbye. Thank you. Up next, we have Montana State University. All right, everybody. Well, let me go ahead and get started with my presentation. Thank you all for uh, taking a minute to join with us this evening. My name is Anders Groseth, and I work at Montana State University as our Associate Director for Recruitment. And I just want to take a couple of minutes to introduce you to our community, both on and off campus. So what you're looking at right now is the beautiful town of Bozeman, Montana. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Montana State University or with Bozeman, um, we're located in the southwest corner of our state. We're about 90 miles directly north of Yellowstone National Park. So with Yellowstone National Park being so close, what you'll find is that we are really an outdoor capital. Um, we have tons of outdoor opportunities in regards to hiking, biking, camping, fishing, skiing, anything else along those lines. We're the third largest community in the state of Montana, and so we have some of those aspects that help us feel like a college town, definitely, but some of those aspects that kind of fit, help feel like, a, like that smaller community that helps welcome students home as well. For our university, uh, we have just over 16,000 students. That 16,249 students is our official enrollment from last, or from last fall semester. Uh, we're a very interesting student body population, 50% in-state and 50% out-of-state students. And so it's a really tight-knit community that we have on our campus. Uh, as you've heard with many of the other schools this evening, we have student representation from all 50 states across the country and more than 60 different countries around the world. So with our campus environment, what you'll find is that we have a lot of those opportunities and the engagement of a larger university, but the support and resources of a smaller campus. There's more than 300 different student groups and organizations that our students can become involved with. And we also compete in D Division I athletics with everything from our men's and women's basketball team, football, volleyball, all the way to our rodeo team in which the women's rodeo team was crowned the national champions last year, which was very exciting for us. Now, talking about the areas of study and academic programs that we offer at Montana State University, there's a lot to choose from. We offer more than 250 different majors and each are housed within eight different academic colleges. Some unique programs that we offer at Montana State University would be our Honors College, which is for those really active, uh, active academic students. So the Honors College is a fully accredited academic college. So after four years, if you achieve 18 credits through the Honors College, you'll graduate with a full honors diploma. We also offer pre-professional programs for pre-medicine, pre-dental, pre-optometry, and then pre-law and veterinary sciences for those of you students who might wanna go on to a graduate program. The reason we call those pre-professional is that they're areas of study that we don't have a graduate program at our university, but we can, we can help you prepare for whatever that next step might be once you leave Montana State University. And then the very last thing that you see listed there is what's called university studies, and that's our undeclared option. We see about a fifth of every freshman class, about 20% of students coming into Montana State will choose to not declare a major for that first year. And so this university studies option helps students explore everything that's available at Montana State University to make sure that once they do feel comfortable declaring their major, they're doing so having made the most informed decision possible. Uh, I also heard some of the other schools mention, these are direct entry programs. So once you apply into Montana State University as a whole and are accepted, you've just been accepted into every different area of study at, available on our campus, which means that you're gonna be in those classes your very first day. 
Now, academic opportunities are in the classroom are one thing, but the style of education is very, very important for us at Montana State University. MSU has been recognized as an R1 institution by the Carnegie Foundation, of which there is 130 across the country. And that means that we are a university with very high research activity. We have a research or creative experience component built into every single degree that we offer, which means that if you go into the creative arts or the health sciences or engineering or business, at some point throughout your four years at Montana State, you have to do something original. You have to push your field forward towards the creation of new knowledge. We feel like that's the most engaging style of education for students these days. And so we want you to get your fingernails dirty and have as much fun with your education as possible. Our land grant mission, and when it comes to applying to Montana State University, we work on what's called a rolling admissions policy, which I've heard this evening as well. So we are already accepting applications for the fall of 2022. We do not require any essays or letters of recommendation to be submitted with our application, which means that we have about a 10 business day turnaround time from when you submit to when you receive your letter of acceptance. And as you can see on there, beginning in 2021, we did go fully test optional for admissions purposes, as well as scholarship opportunities. For our out-of-state students, we have one large scholarship program called the Achievement Awards, which is an automated scholarship program. So when you apply for admission, you're automatically considered for an Achievement Award. And then we also participate in that Western Undergraduate Exchange Program, but that does require a separate application, which opens in the first week of October and is due on the first of the calendar year, January 1st of your senior year. For anybody who's already admitted to Montana State University, kind of some housekeeping items. Um, the housing application opens on October 1st, and then the next steps would be to send in official transcripts and sign up for um, an official orientation program. And then final thoughts, just my contact information, as many others have done, I will throw this in the chat, but we want to keep in touch with you. We want to serve as a resource for you throughout your college search. So I appreciate your time. I hope to keep in touch with you. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Hope you all enjoy. Take care. Thank you. Up next, we have the University of Montana Western. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Matt Allen, and I am the Director of Admissions at the University of Montana Western. So Montana Western is a small public institution located in southwestern Montana. So we're right on that red W there on your screen. Um, Dillon is a smaller rural community, only about 5,000 people. Uh, the university itself is a little over 1,200 students. Uh, we're located in the Beaverhead Valley, surrounded by seven different mountain ranges. A uh, very beautiful place to go to school. Uh, if you like the outdoors at all, you're absolutely going to love coming to school at Montana Western. We are literally minutes from hunting, fishing, camping, hiking, skiing, snowboarding. Um, there's three blue ribbon trout streams that are less than 20 minutes from campus. So really great place for the outdoors. Um, small class sizes, our average class size is 15 students. We cap our courses at 25. So a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention from your professor. So um, academic programs that we offer in Montana Western, we try and have a wider range of programs for our students. We were Montana's very first teacher education school. So education is our largest and probably most known uh, program. Um, most popular are education, business uh, programs in our health and human performance uh, um, department. So kinesiology, physical education, um, biology. Uh, we do a great job of prepping students for medical school, vet school, physical therapy school, as we have a pre-professional program uh, like MSU had mentioned. And then also environmental sciences are, are really popular. Uh, we have a lot of unique majors as well as we have a glass program. Students can focus on scientific or artistic glass. We have the nation's only four-year accredited degree in natural horsemanship. And so a lot of really unique uh, programs that you can study. The most unique thing about Montana Western though is uh, how we teach our courses. We are the only four-year public institution in the country that operates on a block scheduling model that we call Experience One or X1. And how it works is instead of a normal semester-based system where you're taking multiple classes all together at the same time, with a lot more emphasis typically being on the lecture side of things, what we do at Montana Western is we break our semesters into these four three and a half week blocks. And what students do for three and a half weeks is they take one course at a time. So all they have to do is focus on one subject, they have homework in one area, they have one professor to communicate with. And why we do this is we wanna eliminate lecture style courses and focus on experiential education. 
We want you doing the things in class that you're going to be doing for a profession starting your freshman and sophomore year. So if you're an environmental science major, you're going to Yellowstone National Park and you're doing research. If you are an education major, you're in classrooms designing lesson plans and teaching students. So it's all about getting those real world experiences. And our goal is that when a student graduates that they do so with two to three years of experience in their field of study. So whether it's a job, whether it's grad school, whatever your goal may be, uh, we want you to have two to three years of additional experience on top of your internship or student teaching. So that way you stand out when you take that next step. You have that experience that employers and grad schools are looking for to really make yourself, uh, like I say, stand out and you're able to get that position. And this just kind of shows you versus that traditional semester based system, taking multiple classes all together at the same time, juggling all those courses, um, having less time in class, things like that. Some of the advantages of the block system, it truly simplifies your schedule. If you come to school at Montana Western, you'll never go home at night going, ah, I got to do my math homework. I have to do my history homework because all you have is homework in one area. 100% of your attention is focused on that. You're learning from one professor at a time. You're not having to go, this professor likes MLA citation. This professor likes APA citation. If you miss a day because you're a student athlete or because you're sick, you're not communicating with four or five different professors. You take your classes one at a time, our professors teach one course at a time. So if you have to talk to your professor after your class, they're not gonna blow you off because they have another class to go teach in 15 minutes. Your class is the only class that they're focused on. And the other nice thing is we don't have finals week. That last week of the semester, you don't have five tests and three presentations all due at the same time. So it really simplifies your schedule. Another big advantage of Montana Western is our cost of attendance. We are Montana's most affordable four-year institution. So as you can see, um, we have non-resident tuition and WUI tuition for out-of-state students. Um, this is yearly tuition. This is not semester cost. So any student that's coming from Nevada or California, we automatically give WUI to if they have a cumulative GPA of 3.0 or higher. If you don't have that, we do have an appeals process that you can go to to earn WUI. But instead of paying out-of-state tuition, which is just a little under $16,000 for the year, your yearly tuition is dropped below $7,000. You pay around $6,800 a year in tuition. The other nice thing is that we do the FAFSA program and we offer university and academic scholarships and athletic scholarships. And we allow students to stack scholarships on top of their WUI. So just because you get WUI does not mean that's the only scholarship that you're gonna get. You also get academic and university scholarships. We're gonna throw that on top there help bring that cost down even farther. A lot of really great things at Montana Western, student activities, uh, we have clubs, intramural sports, um, we have concerts, plays, music performances. One of the really cool things that we have is if you get involved on campus, you can earn points by scanning your student ID card. And then at the end of each semester, we do auctions where you can actually bid on prizes like flat screen TVs, laptop computers, gaming devices. So really cool in that aspect. And then we also do have, have athletics. So, um, so uh, if you're a student athlete, you can come here and compete. We're NAIA, and so we offer, like I said, athletic scholarships. Application process, real quick. Uh, all you need to do is submit an application, pay a $30 application fee, uh, submit a current high school transcript and immunization records. With that, we'll get you admitted, and then basically you just need to submit a final official transcript once you graduate. If you have any questions, definitely feel uh, free to reach out to me. Uh, this is a picture of one of our great lakes right here in Beaverhead County. Um, but yeah, no, it was great visiting with you tonight. Thank you. With that said, that concludes the presentation portion of our session today. We're now going to transition to the Q&A. So I'm going to encourage all of our presenters to return. Feel free to turn your cameras back on and I will pose a question to the group. Our panelists will respond to the question in the order in which they presented. So the first question here. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Hey everyone, Andrew from University of Alaska Fairbanks here. Uh, I would say one of the most important things is uh, just sending that initial email, making that phone call, getting in touch with either your admissions counselor or getting in touch with the current student at the schools that you're looking at. Uh, while all of us, all of us uh, admissions counselors are really helpful and we know a lot, uh, one of the best things to do is get on the phone or exchange message messages with a current UAF student. They can answer your questions, tell you what life on campus is like, answer some application questions. It's a little less intimidating than talking to 
one of us, but still reach out to your admissions counselor because we want to help you. I would say my biggest advice would be visit the campus. I think even when you're going through that college series process, you can see all the different schools, everything might, everyone might have the same major, but you really need to see if you can see yourself as a student there. So if you have the opportunity to visit, um, definitely do that. Or I know everyone is doing virtual visits now. So definitely take that opportunity. Yeah, I'm just kind of going off that. I would say, uh, I guess just not limiting yourself, not just having a focus on one school, if there might be a few that you're interested in. Um, I think you'd be surprised by the wildly different financial aid and scholarship options at different institutions. So you, a, a school that maybe wasn't a, a top of your list could potentially work its way up there um, just by going through that application process. So we're always here to help. Yeah, I would say um, making sure that you're organized throughout the process. Um, Understanding, having a checklist ready to uh, make sure you submitted the app fee, submitted the application, sent your uh, transcripts to each school, um, that'll take a lot of stress off of you. So just being organized. I'm gonna say almost the exact same thing, but that's what I was gonna say as well, is almost create a calendar. There's some schools that have deadlines for things like scholarships and application deadlines, housing deadlines, things like that. And we never want a student to have missed their opportunity because a date passes, essentially. So that organization uh, that Jermaine was just talking about, that's huge. I, I, that's, that's something that I would echo as well. Uh, ditto, agree with everybody. Uh, one of the things I really try and press too is, is don't be afraid to, to get in contact with us. Um, a lot of students sometimes feel like admissions reps and directors are gatekeepers and we're scanning to try and get students in. We wanna help as many students as we can. And so anytime you call or email, we're gonna go out of our way to make sure that you're getting the information you need. And if we don't know that information, we're gonna get you in touch with who does. Great advice from the group. One final question here and feel free to um, respond again in the order in which you present it. So the question is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Uh, yeah, so uh, like I said during the presentation, uh, UAF is the farthest north uh, university in the United States. So you're going to get your degree. You're going to walk away with that bachelor's degree, all those experiences that you want, your undergraduate experience. But when you go on to your interviews, all those future social interactions, you're going to be able to tell people that you lived in Alaska for four years. You lived up in the farthest north city in the United States. How cool is that? You got to see the aurora uh, just like walking out your front door. Uh, you'll think to talk about and stories to tell. People think you're interesting. You're already interesting, but you'll be more interesting. <laughs> I would say that Chaminade is a private small university, but a really we have a really big impact within our community. And bonus, we're in Honolulu, Hawaii. So summer all year long, which is really nice for students that may not like the cold. My answer was location. And then I realized that Hawaii was going to be going ahead of me. But um, yeah, I think location in the sense of being in a capital city is uh, really awesome just for the recreational side of things, but also for the internships and connections and um, just the opportunities potentially post-graduation. So I guess, yeah, our location. Um, I, I would say to, uh, to apply because 76% or I'm sorry, over, just over 70% of our applicants were admitted to the U of I. So, and that's the one great thing about schools outside of California is that the admit rates are much higher. So 70%, guys, keep that in mind. Uh, for Montana State, I would say it's the juxtaposition between big and small. We really try and feel like the smallest university possible while providing the access and opportunities to larger campus experiences. Things like research, division one sports, and just good student interactions on that big side of things but support and services and resources of a smaller campus as well. So kind of getting to ride that fine line. And at Montana Western, I just want to drive home, you know, that the block scheduling model that we, we have is, is extremely unique. There's private schools uh, that do something uh, kind of similar, but the nice thing about being a public institution is we can be much more affordable. And with our WUI tuition and scholarships, a lot of times, even being an out-of-state institution, we can be a student's most affordable option, so. Thank you all for sharing. 
So that concludes our college fair for today. Um, but I do have a few closing announcements. As you exit from this session, a survey will appear. It's approximately five questions, but please complete this survey. It's extremely helpful as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings. Also wanna remind you to sign up for additional sessions by visiting a registration site. And again, you can access this recording by visiting the site on your screen. With all of that said, I wanna thank our amazing presenters for joining us, but also thank you to all of our attendees. I hope everyone has a great evening.